you know, the Tesla story is an interesting one. Did you have any thoughts on the Tesla story at all? Well, I like what you said. At the end of the day, it's such a cool product. And you look at some of these other electric cars like the Bolt, it looks like a Ford Taurus, right? So I think that style prevails there, and I, I am a big fan of Tesla just because yeah. of that component. I mean, we'll see what happens. Cool. Yeah, but they're going to have a lot of competition in the years ahead. So you're feeling bullish. I mean, so you're not surprised on a day like today where we were down over 300 points that the markets came back, right? No, not at all. I mean, remember, Volatility is normal even in a bull market. I mean, the markets are still up over 17% this year, roughly. Mm -hmm. And any given year, you usually get about 3 5% corrections. So we're on our potential third 5% correction. So I think it's just normal market volatility. And as an investor and a bullish investor, that's always a great buying opportunity. So, um, you know, we, we always watch like 2850 on the downside for the S&P 500. Then I heard if that breaks 2837, you're not looking at those levels. You're looking above 3000. You're looking at 3500 on the S&P, right? I like to go bold on the upside, uh, <laughs> as you know. And I think a lot of it has to do with, I still look at all the money just sitting in cash right now. If you look at investors right now, they're sitting with like $3.4 billion in money market funds. The last time they had that much cash was back in 2009, and that was during the Great Recession, right? We just went right. through one of the worst bear markets. So everyone's already positioned for Armageddon, and so much money is already sold out of the market, like $250 billion of you know, retail money has left the markets, that I think right. if anything, you get some good news here, which I think you will, Nicole, with earnings, that money can come piling back in the market and push it a lot higher. So you think that these millennials and baby boomers, they're gonna have to move some money into stocks because maybe they're being a little too cautious at this time, basically? Yeah, well, look at my client base, which are a lot of baby boomers, and every day you have 10,000 people turning 65 in this country, mm -hmm. and they can't retire on a uh, one or 2% treasury where you're paying taxes on it. And you just look how cash flow rich the market is right now. I mean, you can buy value right. stocks paying three, four percent. The dividend's going up. At some point, they need something to live on, so equity is going to be very attractive. Right, they're going to need. And you know, what about what you're talking about bonds? I mean, any the high risk? You think that's uh, not a great area, right? Well, my piece this week called it bond hell. <laughs> bond hell. I know. Okay. okay can little... we say that on television? All right, go ahead. I hope so. We're talking about the place, right? We're talking about the place, not the curse word. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think in, in terms of bond hell, what I mean by that is we've had so much money going to the bond market, and you've done it at such low yields, very unattractive yields, and everyone's pricing in that yields are going to go lower here. And remember, the Fed doesn't control long-term interest rates. Right. The bond gods do, or in this case, the global markets do. And there's no reason, especially if we get a deal with China at some point, which I think we will, the interest right. rates start to go up, which pushes bond prices down. Now you have all these investors in these bond funds that are probably going to sell at the same time. It's like yelling fire in a crowded theater. <laughs> so you're saying go into equities, I guess do it methodically, right? Don't just take all your money out today and say put all in equities, right? Well, I think dollar cost averaging is a good way to do it, but if you've been sitting on the sidelines, you know, yeah. I, and you're a long-term investor, just go for it. Why wait? Right? Take advantage wait, wait, of the fact that the market's giving these lower so, prices. So, what do you recommend investing in? I mean, because the IPOs, you sort of seem a little, because I know 50/50 on the IPOs, some are higher than their IPO price, some are lower, right? Yeah, and statistically, if you look at the IPO market, it actually underperforms the overall market over the next three to five years. So they typically okay. come out overvalued. So I'm not a big lover of buying things at the IPO price. Um, but if you look at the market in general right now and you break it out, like if you look at growth and value, value is yeah. trading at the cheapest, like it's ever traded versus growth. So value stocks right now are just tremendous value. So do you have types of value stocks that you like? I mean, are there areas that you recommend? You don't do exact stock recommendations, but I mean, what would be yeah. your recommendation? The large cap? I mean, tech? Yeah, well, value across the board, whether you're talking about large, mid, or small, all looks very attractive. If you look at Ford earnings right now, you're like around 13, 14 times, which is much cheaper right. than the market. But if you want to get sector-based, I mean, I just think energy looks great here. The dividend oh. yields are really attractive. Valuations are reasonable. Financials are dirt cheap. You're getting great interest or dividends rather on your yeah. financials, and your valuations are like 10, 11 times earnings. Like, that's great value. You're not going to get that forever. How are you feeling about the jobs report tomorrow? I think we're going to get more of the same. I think it's going to still be solid numbers that we've seen throughout this economic expansion. Right. So I think you'll come in, you know, the estimates, like 144,000 new jobs created, somewhere around there, 3.7% on the unemployment number. I think you're going to be coming very close, mm -hmm. not right on the dot. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to still stay positive. Is there anything that's going to change your mind? Oof. 
It's going to be hard to change my mind from being bullish here, but I think you do have to watch the service sector, which is still an expansion. But remember, we're a service-based economy. That's what really drives our GDP. So as long as the service sector is in an expansion, not a contraction, that's very bullish.